Hey everybody, and welcome to Stitch with Creations. This is a special Dungeons & Dragons themed magic box collaboration. Six of us got together and made boxes of materials to create our own Dungeons & Dragons character. The six of us were given different classes to make boxes for. Cabinet of Creations gave me a box for a necromancer. I made a bard box for Diamonds of Craft. Steffu Dolls made a ranger box for Cabinet of Creations. Splendid Miscellany made a rogue box for Steffu Dolls. Dolly Mixtures made a druid box for Splendid Miscellany. And Diamonds of Craft made a fighter for Dolly Mixtures. Right, this is my box of stuff. This was so much fun to unwrap. So many amazing things. And there's some fabric that's like a soft boucle, uh, a piece of grass, and this is a suede type fabric with a silky back, and this is some pleather. There were some electronics and some other bits and pieces from I Sew For Doll, which is amazing. Lots of little bits for belts, buckles, and uh, a bit of leather. And a little sword, it's so cute! There were also some very tasty sweeties. Um, they didn't last very long. And some dust clay, air drying clay, which is one of my nemesis. And I did use it, but it's gonna have to be shown in a second video because this one's so long so a massive massive thank you to cabinet of creations for this amazing stuff for my necromancer i had so much fun making her so here we go let's go for it into the video for this doll i'm going to use monica decay because she has got quite a sly look on her face and she is the skin tone that I want. So I'm going to start by prepping her, getting all of her jewellery, boots and clothes off, the usual stuff, tie her hair off, cut it all off, stick her in some boiling water and then pop her head off. Now I don't need to go into detail about how to prepare a doll, um, there's loads of tutorials on previous videos and other videos, but I do want to talk to you about Dungeons & Dragons because I've been playing that for 20 odd years now as old lady and uh, it's a really good fun game to play with other people you get to explore all sorts of different uh, things as a different character in a different world it's quite nice and a uh, good bit of escapism to go with the necromantic theme a necromancer is somebody who likes to raise them dead and use them for their own means uh, I decided to use Monica to be a drow character Typically these are dark elves, usually have black skin, but uh, as I found out in previous videos, <laughs> painting on the darkest of dark skin tones is really difficult to brighten up, so with the grey I can build up the shadows easier. I'm using a two-part epoxy to sculpt on some elf-like ears, as the drow are dark elves and live underground in a place called the Underdark. So. Back to the doll rather than my nerding, I'm going to use the epoxy sculpt to cut the ears. I did both of them at the same time, which was a mistake because I bodged one. I've put some armature wire in uh, via the ear piercing hole and uh, stuck it out the back of the ear to make a, a nice armature wire for the ears to stand on. I go in with the silicon tool to try and get some definition and to eke the shape out a bit better because my fingers can't get in behind the head. I use uh, water to smooth it out and blend it into the skin a bit more as well. I did the same on the other side and now I'm going to leave it to cure overnight. For this custom I have decided to use alpaca hair. I've used it before but I've usually made wigs um, so I'm going to attempt to reroute using the alpaca hair and 
because it's got a grain to it you have to plug it at the top end and make sure that the the grain is going down like your own head as so that it doesn't back up and fuzz up Sometimes when you're taking hair out it can get a bit fuzzy so have some water on hand and wet your fingers and you can pull it through into a thread like this and it's easier to reroute. After a million and one days the reroute's done and I can put some Yoohoo glue in to hold the hair into place. Because this hair is so silky, I want to make sure I've got all the plugs so I bodge it around a bit with the end of the paintbrush. And now she's all safely wrapped up in a little hair burrito and I can start with some shading. I'm using mostly greys and I didn't paint the ears, I probably should have, but you can't really see and actually the pastels bring out the uh, depth and highlights well enough. Bits where I feel the pastel's a bit too dark, I use uh, some of the head burrito and a kneaded rubber to lift it a little bit so it's a little bit lighter. I do a bit of blushing with a light pink on the lips and the cheeks just to give her a bit of a glow. Use a white pencil just to try and bring out some of the highlights on the end of her nose and on her lips. Now I've got the shading to a level I like, I'm going to start sketching in some of the features like her eyes. Like with all the repaints, I use MSC, Mr. Super Clear, and I will build up the colours in the layers. And each time the colour won't take any more, I'll do another layer of Mr. Super Clear, let that dry for half an hour, and then come back in with the pencils over again and build up the opacity of the colours. the ears at this point looked really stark and different so I'm using the pencil and a little bit of water to try and lighten them up a bit and uh, it works in the end 
you can't really tell, mostly because it's behind a lot of hair. I use red and yellow for the eyes because traditionally drow have red irises um, but I like to put a bit of yellow in to give them a bit of depth and a bit more, I don't know, realism? Can you have real red iris eyes? I don't know. It's a fancy creature, it's fine. I wanted to try and steer clear of the dark, gothic, vampy look for a necromancer, so she's got some nice pinky lips. And it was at this stage I realised she really had had enough of the living. She's done with everybody's crap. I wanted to put a bit of shimmer on her eyelids so I used a silver watercolour pencil and took some of the pigment straight off the pencil itself to paint on the eyelids.
Just going to add some definition to the eyebrow hairs with a bit of black, a bit of white and some grey. And uh, yeah, I'm quite happy with her face. And now my new finishing favourite touch to finish eyes off, some easy resin, oh, I tried to do it delicately, I'm getting it everywhere, <laughs> UV resin on the irises to make them look a bit more rounded and 3D. And there we go, both eyes are done and the light shines off them quite nicely. I decided to put some black acrylic onto her eyelash line just to reinforce the shape of the top of her eye because the resin <laughs> bowed it a bit. I'm using the faux suede out of my magic box and I'm working out which way the grain goes and it goes at right angles at the, this way and that way so where I'm drawing the arrow it means I will be cutting it on the cross so it will fall and flow better as a skirt I shall cut out a waist size and because it's a magic box and I didn't really want to overthink it too much, I kind of just went with the flow, so I'm making it up as I go along. I had the plan to make a skirt that splits up both sides and fits floor length at the front and is quite fitting, and then at the back have a fishtail effect. As you can see it really is just rough guessing pretty much everything so I'm just drawing out a basic shape and I'm gonna stitch that together and go from there and it worked out quite well actually
So I'm cutting on the cross again and now I've got the front of the skirt sorted I know where I will be sewing so I will cut out a similar shape and have it flare out massively at the back and have it scalloped so she has a train. I'm sewing the sides together and I'm going to leave a gap at the back so her bum can squeeze through and I've turned the tops over before I've stitched this bit together already. Because the fabric doesn't fray, I'm just going to use a bit of fabri -Tac glue and I've turned the edges over so there's no stitching showing on the front or the back. For the top I've got a Gina Fire dress that I've cut the top off and I'm going to use it to make uh, a halter neck type top. I was going to make it long originally but uh, it will change as I go through. I've sketched the shape and the little darts at the side are where it's going to be pinned in to go around the bust shape. I cut two out just in case I messed one up, um, but I ended up not having to <laughs> mess about with the other one too much. I've also had to hand stoke this because it kept getting stuck underneath my sewing machine and it kept trying to eat it, so it's all been done by hand this bit. That's one of the darts sewn together and as you can see it will fit on the dummy and means that her fits round her boobs rather than making them a strange shape. I've got some of the leather I've just folded over into three here and stuck it together with some fabri -Tac to make a collar. First of all, I thought maybe some kind of harness, maybe a halter neck, but it's, it gets tweaked about and I decided to use it as a kind of choker collar that will be attached to the top somehow, using some of the stuff that I was sent from Cabinet of Creations. Fabric clips are really useful at this stage to hold everything together while I try and work out what the heck I'm doing and where I'm going to go with it. At this point it really is just uh, bimbling through the th thought process and going, ooh, new shiny thing, I can use that, what can I use that for? Uh, I shall use it to make a thing with a thing. So yeah, this is my thought process. Turning it inside out, I can now draw on it to refine the finished shape that I want and trim bits off and hem it how I see fit. I've 
got the shape I want, I can start stitching these beads. They're not beads. They're it's like a metallic chain made out of beady type things. Either way, it's really cool and it was one of those things that just sort of went, oh, yes, this is amazing. I'm going to put it on this. And I've still got loads left, so that's going to be used again. So it kept popping off the neck collar bit, so I've got a grey ribbon and some Fabri-Tac glue, I want it off screen, but I'm just sticking on the beads with the glue and then I'll be putting the leather collar thing around the top of that and sticking that on <laughs> because it wouldn't bloody stick. dry I have sewn a press stud onto the neck and that will hold it together around the neck ah, so now to just work out how it goes on and ties underneath otherwise she's going to be slipping a lot I'm going to use some more of that folded over leatherette that I've got and use another of the findings that I got sent to make like a little mini belt that goes across and holds the bottom of it down To hold this together I'm stabbing a hole through the pleather with a, an unpick and then using a paper brad for paper crafting I'm going to use it like a split it open and fold it back on itself so it'll hold it like a rivet would in a normal belt. decided how to fix it onto there, I cut it down, hemmed it again, and there we have the tiniest, fiddliest little top I think I've ever made, but I'm really quite pleased with it. So, using some of the dust clay, uh, which I haven't used since I was probably at primary school, I've made a little skull and the other bits and pieces I will show in another video because this one's already nearly 40 minutes long. And uh, I made a little skull for her to hold because a necromancer is never a necromancer without a little buddy that she can hold on to and look creepy with. Now I think this is probably my first attempt at making boots so it's probably laughable, I apologise. Uh, I've wrapped the leg in cling film and then I'm going to use washi tape, uh, like paper mache, to make a kind of cast around the leg so I can make a pattern from the shape that's going to come off. After drawing where the sole is and a split up the back, I'm going to use my scalpel to cut the foot, not to my hand please, and peel it off nice and slowly to reveal a boot shape. I need better washi tape because this stuff just kept falling off at any, every, any given moment. Now I 
have an approximate shape of a boot. I'm going to sketch around that with a white pencil onto the faux leather again and cut out a boot shape. with the shape I'll put it onto another piece and cut out the second boot. For the soles of the shoes I've used some warbler thermoplastic, I've heated it up over a candle and I've moulded it to her feet. I've sewn the back of the boot up to the bottom of the calf and I will be putting the base back on the shoe and putting the boot over the top of that and sticking the boot upper to the sole and then I will put another layer of warbler over the top of the bottom of the sole to make it a shoe. So this is it stuck on. I'm going to get another piece of warbler in a sole shape and stick it up over the top. It's black on black so it's actually really difficult to see and I had a really hard time trying to film it so you could see it better but uh, yeah honestly there's another layer of, of warbler on there and uh, there you go see look more warbler and I put another bit on the end to give it a bit of a heel as well. shoes have soles now and to hold them up on the leg I'm going to put another piece of warbler in on the inside and while it's still warm wrap it around the top of the calf shape to give it its shape so it can clip onto the leg rather than slide on and off and it means I can slouch the boots a bit as well. have a bit of cohesiveness with the rest of the outfit I have done another little belt which can wrap around the top of the boot and hold it up a bit better and it gives it a bit more of a visual interest as well. So I asked on the channel if any of you guys uh, played D&D or even know what it is and uh, there's quite a few people who didn't so essentially it's a role-playing game you make a character you play that character and you use dice to roll outcomes of situations using your skills to see how well you've done it or not. Um, I also run a live action role play club in the UK uh, where we get to do that but in person and it's a lot of fun and it's one of those things that people go it sounds weird you're just running around hitting each other with rubber swords which is true but we have a lot of fun and actually it's very good for self-esteem and motivation. So using a similar technique to the belt, I've made a scabbard for the sword and I'm going to use some of the belt leather et to make a holder for the scabbard. So I'm just folding that over and I'll use the split pins again to hold that together like a rivet. Using some of the folded leather that I'd been given, I've made her a little belt for her scabbard to hang from, and using some of 
little crystal jewellery findings that I was also sent, I've made a little decoration to go and hang off it as well. Now for the scary bit, trim the neck peg down, heat the head up and pray to the customising gods that the face doesn't crack while you're trying to mush the head on. Yay, she survived! To tame her crazy mane, I'm using some of my tiny straighteners and I'm just trying to pull the hair closer to the head so it's less full and fluffy because my goodness me, she looked like she'd been dragged through a hedge backwards. Here she is, here is her kit. Now let's get her ready for an adventure.
up getting the last piece of material, the fluffy boucle, I shall make into a traditional cloak, just to wrap around her shoulders. Our six adventurers are ready. Fair Talon, the necromancer, is prepared. Please go and have a look at my fellow collaborators' videos, because this was one of the most exciting and epic collabs I've been part of. And I just wanted to say a massive thank you to Lee from Dolly Mixtures for organising it all. You are an absolute star. I had a really good time on this project and I hope you guys did too. If you want to see more, please do the usual, like, subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye! Thank you.